normally you see me on YouTube videos behind the controls of my 100 watt CO2 laser. I've literally over the last four to five years had thousands of emails asking me to point you in the right direction of a small CO2 laser that can be used as a learning tool. If you look on the internet there's lots of machines out there 40, 45 watt and they are hugely expensive for what they are. So I am going to show you a 40 watt laser that you can purchase and start to teach yourself how to use a laser, a CO2 laser for less than $500. But be warned you will need to do some work with it. Even though it's a brand new machine, it is not up to a standard that I would regard to be safe. And should we say the engineering in it is uh, quite a bit questionable. So uh, what I intend to do with this next series of videos is show you what it is and show you how to get it up to a level where it's safe and easier to use, uh, expand its capabilities and I suppose teach you how to use it. So the next thing to do I suppose is unbox it. So it comes pretty well packaged and it weighs around about um, I suppose I think it's uh, 18 kilos which is all pounds I suppose it's uh, about 40 pounds in weight and it's well packaged there's uh, a lot of polystyrene around it and uh, we'll, we'll get it out of this box and I'll come back to you next And I must put a disclaimer in here right now. I paid for this machine. So I can say exactly what I want about this machine. I am not supported by any of the laser companies. So you're going to get the facts. Um, look, it's quite amazing. Actually, I paid Australian dollars, uh, I think um, 460 Australian dollars, which is about oh, three, oh, somewhere around about 370, 380, something like that. Now, the model I have here is one of the, I, should, I suppose they call it the older model. Uh, it's analog controls. Now, personally, I wouldn't touch the push button um, electronic reader ones because they uh, they just give you a percentage of the power supply of what the power supply is putting out from one percent up to one hundred percent. Well, I'm telling you now, if you run these lasers at 100% of what the power supply can put out it's going to last you five minutes because you're overdriving the tube. Um, I can tell you that the maximum milliwatts you can put into a 40 watt tube is 18. Okay, 18. Now this power supply will probably put 25, 26 milliwatts at about 16,000 volts uh, and you know you're dealing with quite dangerous voltage here that, that will arrest your heart okay if there's a leakage 
uh, you know, in the, in the high voltage circuit, or if it's not earthed properly, and that's one of the things we're going to find out, um, it, uh, it is possible it can kill you. Okay, that aside, this is the one I would recommend to, to get for a, for, a, for a starter. Because you have um, a milliamp meter, you have a variable control, all right, there's no markings on here to, you know, to sort of say how many percent. You don't need it, really. You go by the, the milliwatts. And if you know the maximum the tube will take is 18 milliwatts, well, you can vary between that. You, you've got some, some way to work, you know, max and min. Okay, on off switch, test switch, laser on switch. Okay, um, so we'll have a look, look around it first. So I'll just spin it around. And the company who I got this from was actually an eBay, eBay seller. I told him exactly what I was going to do with it. And I can see that they've upgraded it already <laughs> because normally you get a horrible um, 240 volt blower on here, which is a big square affair. Well, this is the upgraded version that I can see someone's Jerry Rig did. It's okay, but I can tell you now that that little basically it's a computer fan, it's 24 volt. Uh, 0.35 amps. It's a fairly decent computer fan, but it's not going to move the volume of air that's going to be required for a 40 watt laser, but we're going to sort that out later. So you have a cooling fan for the electronics, you've got um, Two for the, these plugs here are for the auxiliary items, uh, water pump and so on. Um, and this is your main input, which is a standard sort of 240 volt input that you'd use it for a computer. Now, inside there'll be a fuse and this is an external ground wire or earth. That's very important. Because not only do you, you have an earth on the cable, your power cable, which is very important, you have an external secondary earth here, which needs to be connected. And I'll show you how to do that. This is the, I'm sure you've probably seen other unboxings. And yeah polystyrene stuck to it. This is the coolant tubes for the laser, which is in here, and I'll fetch you in a bit closer. Okay, yep, they've modified it. Now, on other models, where you lift this up and it immediately falls back down. And everything is nicely tied up with zip ties. Laser tube looks fine. I know in shipping, quite a few of them will snap off here uh, on the inside, but this one looks fine. Can't see anything wrong with it there. Um, mirrors look fine, but we won't know until we actually get it running. So let's have a look what they've said inside. Okay. Oh, right on. Well, there's the the pouch with, I suspect. <laughs> oh, actually, a nicely bound. Uh, oh, they they've given me an upper class. But there again, I, I will remind you that I am not associated with these companies. And I am able to say exactly what I feel, what I see about this machine. 
Okay. Aha! <laughs> they didn't, um, they didn't print a new page. They actually took a photograph, a rather grainy photograph, of the upgrade and stuck it in the page. And I believe behind here, oh, I can't, is the big horrible square one that you normally see comes with these machines. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's quite a nice touch. And there's some data there about the external ground or earth cable. And I'll show you all about that a bit later. But that's, that's a nice touch. At least they've, they've gone out of their way to make it look nice and bind it. The... Okay, well, that will be the programs. But I'm tell, I can tell you now... Um, don't even bother with the programs that they send you. Um, there is far more su superior programs for this machine out there and I'll show you how to download them and use them. Um, this is um, a type of silicon that is used on the high voltage terminals should you need to replace the tube why would they why would they actually supply that are they expecting the tube to go makes you wonder doesn't it anyway and some oh this is tape to go around the laser tube when you put it in the carrier <laughs> So they probably are expecting it to not last long, maybe. And I'll tell you what a, I'll tell you a little story about that later on. Maybe in the next video. Because all we're concerned about with this one is having a unboxing it basically and having a look. Normal type oh right plug, look at that. Yep, Australian plug. It's all nice. Actually meets Australian standards too, which is good. And that's another thing too. You just heard me mention Australian standards. A lot of the machines brought in from China to Australia, America, England, Germany, you know, Europe, um, do not meet European then or our standards, Western standards. They meet what is commonly known as China export standards, which is not the same. Okay? Uh, we'll go into that in more detail later on. So, the next thing is USB cable. Great. And I suspect this is the water pump for the cooling of the laser tube. It's... Yeah, two... Well... Okay. I'm going to give that a bit of a test to see if it is actually safe. Um, okay. I suppose if you were starting off with a laser, you could use this. But it is so thin and flimsy, uh, I, I, I knew that this was a problem. And uh, I bought my own. And that's one of the modifications that we're going to be doing with this 40 watt laser. Now what we've got here, oh, really, if, look, if you're not going to use the program, you don't need this. This is the key for the program. Uh, this is... Okay, this is the 
bed that actually covers this. Um, let me just push this back out the way. When you move the gantry or the the head, move it slowly. Don't catch hold of it. Go zip because these stepper motors, as they turn around, they act as generators and they can send power back to the board and you can actually burn something out on the board. So if you, when you move it, just slowly, steadily. Oh, look at that. And another thing I notice here too, is that although they still have this horrible trunk in here to <laughs> for the airflow they have actually fitted a modified one that is cut back uh, most of them protrude too far out here and uh, you know you i will be modifying this myself anyway um, as indeed I will be modifying quite a bit of these items and this is the normal type of spring loaded oh it only comes that far great so you can get something there about about three inches wide and clamp it there I don't know whether that would be handy or not but this is an aluminium plate. Now I, I hate having aluminium in inside the bed and the whole bed is aluminium and I will show you at some point what can happen with a CL2 laser that has aluminium inside of the inside on the bed. Or the, it, it, aluminium will actually reflect about 98% of the laser. <laughs>